Welcome back to the Final Days channel. Boy, it feels good to be back. Today is February 6th, 2021. Please feel free to share or reuse any parts of any of my videos. Let's get the truth out there. I know it's been quite a while since I've published a video, but I only put these out when the Holy Spirit tells me to. He has given me a warning dream about uh, tectonic plates shifting that he wants me to share. But first, let's look at some recent oddities with our moon. In many of these federal aviation weather images, our moon appears as a tiny dot in the sky, such as this footage taken from the weather camera located in Bathurst, New Brunswick in Canada. All of these images were obtained yesterday from the FAA weather cameras in the U.S. and Canada. We know that this tiny light is either the, either the moon or the projector that displays our moon because the dot we see in these images does coincide with the moonrise chart from timeanddate.com. Timeanddate.com describes the moon rising and traversing the sky at the exact same time as the date and time stamps on each of these images. Additionally, this chart shows the moon traveling west-southwest, which is the direction it's traveling in these FAA pictures. The south-facing camera in Wasilla, Alaska, shows us the same tiny dot moon phenomenon only in the first two frames, the moon actually appears normal size before it suddenly shrinks down to a small dot within 10 minutes. Now, common sense should tell us that the moon cannot go from this to this in just 10 minutes. In just a minute, we will see what looks like a projector or a projected moon image in the sky. It's very strange. And it does coincide with the moonrise time charts. The south facing weather camera in Thompson Pass, Alaska shows us the same large moon passing through the sky which suddenly becomes a tiny dot. The dot becomes infinitesimally small as it approaches the horizon and finally disappears into nothingness. Now, please, this is not possible. This is not normal. Our moon never did this years ago. These are further signs that we are living in the very last days. Some of you might recall these images of the moon from the Moon Pass Alaska camera last February 2020. The moon starts out large and bright then in the third frame it turns into a wagon wheel before it then shrinks down to a tiny dot that eventually disappears into nothingness into the morning sky in addition to the moon turning into a wagon wheel there is something else very startling about this footage let's take a look at the first two frames again this looks like a full moon doesn't it even though the moon appears to be a full moon in this footage, believe it or not, the real moon is only 40% of the, of the actual size of the moon. This moon should be a crescent, 40%. So once again, if we go to timeanddate.com and look at the moon chart for February 16th of uh, 2020, last year when these images were taken, uh, you'll see this is the date that's time stamped on each image. The moon is only supposed to be at 41% fullness. Here is my artist's rendition of what the moon should be looking like. And not this. These images are quite different from one another. In the Holy Bible, Jesus describes the last days in Luke chapter 21 verse 25 when he says that we will see signs in the sky 
when the end is near. As Christians, we are commanded to watch for these signs and these wonders, signaling the end of the age, so that we are not ignorant of the very late hour in which we are living, and so that we can be spiritually prepared for what lies ahead, and so we can help others become spiritually prepared also. Before we look at images taken from Colorado, it's important for viewers to know that objects behind the manufactured light we are seeing are illuminated as the light passes over them. Some of you may have seen this footage last year from Attawapiskat, Ontario in Canada. The sun appears to rise normally on the left side of the screen and after a few frames into the video the sun suddenly shrinks down to one-fifth its size. Now what's happening here is the real sun is going behind a mammoth structure in space and the artificial light is passing in front of this enormous structure. The sky and landscape suddenly darken because the manufactured light is no match for the real sun. As you can see, the manufactured light passes over this highly textured, gigantic object and lights it up. Of course, it would be absolutely ludicrous to think that we could actually see something like this behind our real sun 93 million miles away. No, that's impossible. Thus, the manufactured light is much, much closer to Earth than our sun. And I just wanted you to see this footage again because it does light up what's behind it and it's going to be important to realize that while we're looking at the next pictures from uh, from Colorado. And according to the timestamps on these images, the real sun is eclipsed for over four hours. Here are some close-up images of this same structure. I don't know what this is, but it can't be terribly far away because it's not visible from the FAA cameras in Colorado and also from many other FAA uh, cameras around. Uh, so it's really only viewable from the cameras that are close to this area. Notice that the structure doesn't move over the course of four hours. It seems to remain completely stationary. However, nowadays it's very rare to see this structure because the skies in this area are always under heavy cloud cover. I don't have names or labels for these things, but I can tell you that these are definitely signs that we are living in the very last days. These are signs that Jesus commanded us to watch for so that we would know the season of his removal and rescue of his true followers who are living in holiness before his wrath is unleashed upon the world of sin and abominations. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that further in a few minutes. The east-facing camera in La Vida Pass, Colorado shows the sunrise and the reflection of the bell-shaped projector we've seen in hundreds and hundreds of these images. And they appear whenever a solar eclipse is occurring. Now this is a reflection. It's not the actual equipment. This bell shape is a reflection. Our sun is eclipsed daily by celestial objects in our sky that neither you or I are allowed to know about. Mainstream media is prohibited from discussing this topic. As the sun rises, the manufactured light source travels in front of a celestial object that is being cloaked from public view while our real sun is behind it. It would be ludicrous here to also imagine that we could see this object behind our real sun 93 million miles away. Here are some of the images with contrast added 
so that the celestial object shows up better. Not everyone has good contrast on their screen, so uh, some of these images are a little difficult to see without contrast added. And as I've mentioned in the past, I only add contrast where needed and not to the entire image. Often, if contrast is applied to the entire image, it doesn't even work. As the manufactured light source passes in front of the celestial object, it illuminates it. Because it illuminates what's in front of the manufactured light as well as what's behind it. Just as we saw a few minutes ago with that large textured structure in the sky. The manufactured light tracks with the sun so that when our real sun is eclipsed by objects in our sky, the eclipse is completely hidden from public view. When the real sun is being eclipsed, the manufactured light is so small that it becomes completely hidden behind, behind a tiny street light. This street light could never completely cover the real sun that would be unimaginable to even think that it could. Nor could our real sun ever become completely hidden behind a thin flagpole or a thin bird feeder post. Our real sun could never be hidden behind a small street lamp, a flagpole, or a thin bird feeder post. Images such as these are only possible when the real sun is being eclipsed by something in the sky. Here is that same object viewed from the east facing camera in Wolf Creek Pass, Colorado, just miles from the camera we just viewed pictures from in La Vida Pass, Colorado. From this angle, we don't see the reflection of the bell-shaped projector. The, this object appears to be traveling in the same direction as the sun, just like the last one we viewed. And as it ascends from the left side of the screen, it gradually rises and heads toward the right side of the screen, same direction as the sun is going. And here's the same object again from yet another camera miles away on Bald Mountain in Colorado. Here we can plainly see the reflection of the bell-shaped projector. We know that this cannot be a lens flare because it becomes hidden behind the clouds. Lens flares can never become hidden behind objects in a photo or video. At Chicamas Canyon, British Columbia in Canada, we see more than one object rising up in the morning behind the mountains. As the morning goes on, it becomes even more obvious that there is more than one object in the sky. The south-facing camera at Thompson Pass, Alaska shows another object traveling in the same direction as the sun. The manufactured light actually catches up with this celestial object. And here we see the jet that is always present at an eclipse. And in the bottom right corner, we see the colorful reflections of that jet. It's not a normal jet. This is a piece of equipment used in the concealment of these daily eclipses. For several reasons, we know that this celestial object cannot possibly be a lens flare of the sun. A lens flare of the sun must look something like the sun, and this is a highly textured object. Unlike the surface of our sun, as you can see, the surface of this object looks very rough. Additionally, the texture does make the rotation of this object 
very obvious. While our sun only rotates once every 27 Earth days, so as fast as this object is rotating, that's another reason it cannot be a lens flare of the sun. And lastly, this object disappears behind clouds in the last frames, and lens flares, lens flares can never go behind clouds. In December of 2019, the Lord gave me a dream, which I've shared in the past in one video, but He has asked me to share this dream again now, today. It's important to share it again at this time. In this dream, I found myself looking at the entire world as if it were a map laid out in front of me. My eyes were made to focus upon the continent of Australia, and it was covered with colored dots over much of the land and including the surrounding water near the coastlines. I was told in the dream that each dot represented an earthquake, of which there were many, some of them very large. And I didn't try to duplicate those dots on this uh, this image here because I was afraid that I would not be able to put them in the correct places and it could alarm somebody and someone might think that an earthquake was coming in their uh, their state or their territory which maybe wasn't the case so I can't remember where all of them were I just remember there was lots of earthquakes all over Australia and then after that, the next thing that occurred was that my eyes were made to focus upon the Western United States and the Pacific Ocean. On this map, I saw a label in the water off the northwestern coast that said Cascadia, and it had a nine next to it, indicating the magnitude of an earthquake. In this dream, I was told that the only reason a magnitude 9 was showing was because the equipment couldn't display a higher number. Then, in slow motion, I saw several tidal waves radiating out from the Cascadia label on the map heading toward California and parts of Alaska as well as the western coast of Mexico. I could see these tidal waves actually moving on the map as they traveled eastward toward the coastlines. The first wave was the largest, and each wave after that was proportionately smaller. I don't recall exactly how many waves there were, but it seemed like there were at least five, each wave being smaller than the wave before it. What could possibly cause tectonic plate disturbances on our planet? Hmm. Untold trillions have been spent on the technology to hide this planetary system. Why all the secrecy? The enemies of Christ do not want you to know how close to the end we are. The enemies of Christ do not want you to turn your life over to Jesus before your time runs out. Information is at the end of this video instructing you on how to accept Jesus into your life. All of this is actually good news because Jesus has promised to remove his faithful followers from earth before his wrath is unleashed upon this earth full of sin and abominations. This is commonly called the rapture, which will take place quickly and quietly. The New King James Version of Luke chapter 21 verse 36 reads, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Jesus is referring to God's wrath. He is saying that those who are counted worthy 
will escape all of God's wrath. The Bible repeatedly promises that the faithful followers of Christ are not appointed to God's wrath. To be counted worthy, we must be living in holiness. A link in the description box below discusses what holiness is and how to achieve it. This information is not to cause fear. Fear is not of God. This information is to let people know that if those who are not in Christ don't have a lot of time to change their lives around and turn to Jesus. Those in Christ have absolutely nothing to fear about what's coming. Those living in holiness are not appointed to God's wrath, which will bring destruction caused by this encroaching planetary system. Many of God's promises to those who love Him are provided in Psalm 91. Read Psalm 91 every day. You are an eternal soul that has been sent into this world into a temporary flesh body. You have complete free will to choose where your eternal soul will go after this temporary earth life is over, whether it be heaven or hell. It is your choice completely. The reason you are here is to choose to love Jesus Christ out of your own free will and live according to that love. We are here to overcome, to learn how to overcome anger, sadness, loneliness, loss, grief. We are here to learn how to overcome to learn how to forgive those who are difficult to forgive and to love those who are difficult to love. We are here to learn how to overcome all these obstacles that we meet along our journey in life. This is the only reason you and I are here. No matter how bad your past is, no matter what you've done, Jesus loves you more than anyone on earth loves you and he is waiting for you to accept him into your life forgiveness salvation and eternal life are offered to everyone regardless of who you are or what your past is the next few screens will tell you how to accept christ into your life simply pause the screen if you need more time to read the text